So happy to have you. And we are sitting here, hang on, I'm dropping things. We're sitting here in the office of the Canadian American Business Council. And Canadian American Business Council is housed within this very cool company called U Group. And the CEO is right there, Lena. Oh, thank and you, Lena. Lena is also on the board of CABC. So thank you for having us. Thank you thank to your you. team. That's great. Uh, and so I'm going to go super fast because uh, I have all day. I have my whole life, but you're on a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time CABC hosted you in Washington, yes was about a year ago. That's right. And you were interviewed on our stage yeah. by my good friend, U.S. Ambassador Kelly Kraft. I and love so her. She, she's the best. You've been downgraded, you get oh, me. She's but she has, <laughs> she has a, she asked me to give you a present. Oh, so these nice. are uh, red, white, and blue M&Ms, oh, courtesy of beautiful. Ambassador Kraft. Oh, I love it. We're waiting for her to get the UN M&Ms, but anyway, right. she's, she's, I don't know if you talked to her today, but I talked to her and she sends her best. Oh, well, thank you, that's great. So um, maybe I could just start with, um, we're happy to have you. What, you. what brings you to town? I, I mean, I know it's us, but what else? Well, along with the national governors. A uh, few governors, here, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're, we're, we're excited. And I always uh, like to tell the people in, in the United States that we're, we're the number one trading partner uh, with a lot of states. 19 states were the number one customer trading partner we're number two to nine other states we do over 300 billion dollars a year in two-way trade and if, if we were a standalone country we would be the third largest trading partner to the united states uh, i always say we're an economic powerhouse and i have my great minister uh, minister vic fideli he's in charge of economic development i always tell him he's our best salesperson out there and job numbers came out uh, today and I'm, I'm so proud to say that it, just over a little over a year we've created 300,000 new private sector jobs and uh, Scotty is very congratulations very thank you uh, economics is very simple you cut red tape you cut regulations you lower uh, business taxes and uh, lower taxes with people and new revenues will come up to to the coffers as as we say and and with that you can reinvest it into other areas into healthcare and education but our economy right now is uh, absolutely on fire, and and I understand it's it's going pretty pretty good down here as well. So it's exciting, and I, I love building things together with our partners. Our best partner in the world is the United States. Uh, couldn't agree more. Some one little known fact that I learned from you last time you were here that a lot of people here don't know. So so when we think in the United States about um, about states, and we think about big, uh, we think about Texas, and uh, you know, don't mess with Texas. Texas is big in every way, you know? Uh, but two Texases could fit in Ontario. Is that right? Something that, like that? That's correct. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> so, yeah. no offense to the governor of Texas, but um, you I'm guys. I'm actually can... heading down there. I'm, I'm heading down there on uh, Sunday night to stir up more business and yeah? uh, I look forward to going into Dallas and meeting with a few stakeholders there. So, um, the Bush Library is down there if you have any time. Um, we've hosted events with uh, at the Bush Library, and if you haven't, if you haven't done, I mean, not to add to your, I know you're you're busy doing business, yeah. but if you can get over there, it's really. Have you been there? Uh, I've been to Texas numerous times. Yeah. I have, they give some of the folks uh, background. I spent almost 20 years in in our facility in Chicago and Illinois, and and grew that company, and spent 20 years traveling around the U.S. Uh, there's no bigger promoter. To the U.S. in Canada than than Doug Ford is. I absolutely love the people here. I love the country, and uh, we're so blessed and so fortunate to have the greatest neighbor in the entire world, the largest uh, unprotected border in the world. Uh, great, great allies, and we'll we'll do things together and, and build things together. We yeah. I mean, I think both countries are best are blessed in our neighbors that's and in our lack of neighbors. Yes. Right. Yeah, May, that's true. Right. That's true. I mean, yeah. it helps. It helps to have oceans. You have yeah. three. Yeah, we have right. two. Um, right. uh, so, when you're talking to governors, um, I know I know you had a meeting uh, with Governor Hogan, yes. um, your partner in crime. Are you talking about uh, things like infrastructure? Is that is that part of it? Like what what specifically besides um, just promoting trade relations are you trying to advance with the governors? 
Well, we're uh, really big in public-private partnerships in, in Ontario. 95% uh, of all the projects that we do is on time, on, on budget. And we're really encouraging uh, people down here to get involved in, uh, as we say, P3s. It makes sure that these projects are, again, on time, on on budget, and just promoting a great relationship. I always believe, I'm, I always say I'm a businessman first, I'm an elected official second. And I take that business approach to the government. And uh, it's all about building a relationship and doing uh, bilateral uh, trade deals, state to province. And that, that's, that's very, very important. And, and looking at the new uh, NAFTA trade deal, I've sent a message to our federal government that put it together in the opposition. Uh, this, this isn't the time for politics. Uh, get this deal signed. Nine million jobs here in the U.S rely on export uh, to the to Canada. It, uh, I think that's conservative. I think yeah, that's a conservative I, I, I number. Think, I yeah. think so too. And one in five jobs in, in Canada rely on uh, exports down to the, the U.S. So it's a, a great partnership. We can build on it. We have uh, all the natural resources you could ever want. Great manufacturing base. For, for instance, the automotive industry is big in Ontario. We, we produce over two million cars just uh, slightly uh, behind Michigan. But people don't realize the parts can travel back and forth between the border eight times before it gets assembled in one of our automotive uh, manufacturing facilities. We have all five of the big five up in Ontario. And it's just making sure that we take down the barriers and get rid of the, the roadblocks that uh, have been in the way until both uh, Ontario in our case and whatever state we partner with uh, can thrive and prosper and grow without the burden of the, the government sticking their nose into it. So we're, we're free traders too, for sure. So we um, totally agree. So my first question on that is um, Mexico has, has ratified the new NAFTA. The United States has ratified it, which is a feat when you think about getting a bipartisan deal done uh, right. in this climate. So the United States has. So it's up in Canada. Um, you got an over-under on when they'll pass it, will they pass it? I mean, uh, we're, we're sitting here tapping yeah. our foot now. What do you think? Well, we, you know, as far as Ontario is concerned, we're, we're, we have the pedal to the metal. Uh, we're really pushing all, all parties up in Ottawa to make sure this gets uh, signed. It's absolutely critical. Again, uh, Scotty, as I was saying earlier, uh, a lot of people want to play politics. This is not the time to play politics uh, on this deal. It's time to get this signed and, and move forward. Totally agree. Hope it happens soon. And then and then all the side letters have to get done so that it becomes operational. So that's the next sure. sort of bureaucratic, you know, mm -hmm. lever. Um, a little slightly um, different take on this, though, Premier, if I could ask you, what about the barriers in between provinces in Canada? Like, it's one thing to trade north-south. Yeah. That's super important. Absolutely. But how do you feel about it's a little bit difficult in certain areas? Is it not for, I mean, I know it is for our companies yeah. sometimes when they're trying to go between so provinces. That, that, that's, that's a great question. We, we have a big problem up in Canada, interprovincial trade. It can uh, bring probably $75 billion right to the GDP. Uh, but it's easier to trade with the United States than it is from province to province, which is, which is absolutely ridiculous. How do you so fix that, do you think? Well, we're breaking down the, the barriers. And I mean, what it consists of is just regulations. Uh, as simple as uh, bringing, a, this, is, this is staggering, bringing more than a case of beer. Uh, if you bring two cases of beer from uh, one province to, to the other or additional bottles of wine, uh, you aren't allowed to do that. Uh, so we're breaking down those barriers. Uh, and that includes uh, trucking. If you, you leave Ontario and you start heading west, uh, we're breaking down the barriers on the, on the wheel size. Th this is how ridiculous these things are. You have to have a different wheel size. Uh, first aid kits that everyone has everywhere. Uh, have different provisions in them that you got to have a six inch bandage instead of a you know a four inch it, it's yeah. just a lot of regulations and, and nonsense but we're we're making a, a lot of uh, headway with the uh, the other uh, premiers I'm glad he, I'm glad to hear that because that's definitely something our members notice um, and deal with trying to comply um, with 
different barriers w between states, but also in particular in Canada. So another side of that coin um, are, are workers. And I know you've, tr you've worked really hard on um, building up the skilled workforce in Ontario. Sure. What about the barriers to mobility of labor? Like, like if, if a particular province um, has extra workers, but they're not certified, like do you think, I mean Canada, we did, that was, we we're happy with the USMCA, but one of the things that really didn't get done that's still on our to-do list from, from Canada to US is labor mobility. But what about in Canada? How are you looking at that? Well, that, that's also a, a challenge, uh, making sure that uh, electricians that are certified in Alberta are able to, to work in, in, in Ontario. But again, it all goes down to the regulations, and, and we're, we're short, um, 250,000 people. So there's 250,000 jobs sitting there, on top of the 300,000 that we created, waiting for people. And that's skilled and, and unskilled. And I had a conversation with the, the federal government, the prime minister, and uh, we're allowed to have uh, slightly over 6,000 economic uh, immigrants come in, uh, skilled trades. But we're, we're at a point right now that uh, we'll, we'll take uh, skilled, and unskilled, and if you're unskilled, we're gonna we're going to train, train you. And yeah. you know, you, you hear uh, large companies investing in in Ontario, like like for instance Amazon. They're advertising on ra on the radio to get people. I had an opportunity to go by their, I think it's their fourth one million square foot uh, distribution center there, and it's uh, it's no different down here. I have uh, a lot of friends and business contacts down here. They're facing the same problem, uh, finding people. Uh, to fill the jobs that are available down here. Yeah, totally. So, he, so here's one right out of left field. Okay, okay I know you can handle it. Um, <laughs> so we're and and you know, look, Washington's a very serious policy town, yeah. and, and all of that. But but uh, you know, sometimes you just got to ask real life questions. So thinking about all the other provinces in Canada, I know Ontario is your favorite, obviously. Yeah. But if you could live somewhere else in Canada, if you had to live outside of Ontario, but it has to be in Canada, what's your favorite province? Uh, favorite? Wow. Or where would you live? Outside of Ontario, I'll tell you, my favorite state is Illinois. I spent Chicago, yeah. Chicago, that's, yeah, of course. That's where I, I just feel at home there. Um, I, I guess Alberta would be great. Any of the provinces are really great. The people on the East Coast are friendly, West Coast, but uh, I'll, I'd take uh, any province. Any province, all right. Okay, well, I tried, a, you guys. That was a tough one. I tried. <laughs> that was a tough one. This is hardest question. All <laughs> so let me, let, while we're still in left field, let's stay here for a minute. Let's talk about yeah. politics for a sec. Okay, okay here you go. Um, and you guys, we didn't have time back. You know, he just got here, so I'm just springing this. I know you can handle it, though. That's all right. We'll see if he ever comes back. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, so uh, in the United States, it's, it's political year in the United States, in case people hadn't noticed. And, it, and you're here at the governor's conference. Uh, the United States has a tradition um, of often electing governors uh, to, they go on to be president. So think about President Reagan, President Bush, President Clinton, all governors. Yeah. Um, and so half the people you meet with this weekend, you know, either think they're going to be president or somebody might be president. In Canada, has there ever been, I don't think there's been a premier that's gone on no. to be, no, so, so, so I know there's a conservative leadership race. So my question is, are you going to, will you declare today that you'll run for the <laughs> Yeah, no, I, actually, Scotty, I appreciate that. And, <laughs> but uh, we, we have a, a big job to uh, uh, make sure that we fulfill our promises. We've only been in office a year and a half, but we've really turned the corner, uh, especially on the economy and job creation. So uh, we have a big job to fulfill over the next uh, two and a half years, and we're, we're excited about doing that. But uh, I wish all the, the people running for the conservative leadership all the best. and and that uh, we're going to focus on Ontario. Ontario is the engine of Canada, and what is good for Ontario is good for Canada, and what's good for Canada is good for Ontario. Okay, that fair enough. There, we, we've created 76% of all new jobs in the country are right here in Ontario. How, and where, what sectors are they coming from? Like, is uh, that high tech? I know you've got right Waterloo and, and you've got the autos, but what's the, what's the most promising sector for you? Well, I think all of them right now, right across a uh, high tech, uh, they, they say we're the Silicon Valley of the North, no matter yeah. if it's, uh, we call it KW, Kitchener, Waterloo. 
Uh, there's jobs being created up there, but also in Toronto and, and Ottawa has a, a massive uh, high-tech sector. The automotive industry is huge, agriculture, uh, mining and, and banking. We're number two in banking, I think next to New York. Gary so we're, Clement we're from TD is here. Thank God you said banking. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> he's, a, he's the chairman of my board. If you didn't yeah, say banking, it was going to be a quick meeting. That's you know a, something, TD's an incredible company. And, uh, TD's they're, they're so big, they're in Canada now. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> Actually, I hear there's more brand branches in the U.S. And, uh, than, than there is in, right. in Canada. Yeah. yeah. So um, so right across the board, um, you're growing. Every yeah. Is there any sector that you wish would um, would grow more? Is there anything that's kind of like like needs a little boost or isn't isn't where you'd know. like to we're, see it? We're, we're humming along pretty good. And, and uh, thanks to the, the great leadership of uh, Minister Fideli, we were able to reduce taxes of uh, close to $5.2 billion dollars. Uh, Putting money back into to uh, companies and uh, being able to, you know, lower we have uh, WSIB uh, workman's comp basically uh, reduce that by 2.2 billion, almost 47 percent. That's like a, a tax break. We've also lowered taxes by 8.75 percent to 420,000 small businesses until they can prosper and thrive. And and I, I'm you know even in our business, a relatively small business, but. Um, when you when you lower when you lower taxes and get rid of regulations on on businesses, they're going to reinvest it. They're going to reinvest it into their people, into the capital equipment, into technology, and uh, again, give them the opportunity to to grow and and uh, hire more people. We we have definitely noticed that. So Canadian American Business Council has large companies uh, like General Mills and small startups like Skyhive, and and um, it is true that that the regulatory burden, um, regulatory certainty is a big um, is a big barrier. We're about to have a roundtable uh, with you with some of our members and a company called Intuit, uh, which has TurboTax and QuickBooks and all that. Um, they're they're our new member and they're our partner in, in this particular roundtable. And what I learned from Rodney um, is. Uh, that all like most of their customers are two-person shops yeah. like maybe three-person shops and um, just having the tools you need to navigate the regulations that exist um, sometimes you, you need a little extra help so into it's one of the companies there are lots of great ways to do that but do, do you really think it's possible to get regulations down even further like so we had a roundtable with you in Queens Park and our members were shocked because half your cabinet was there you were there several people in this room were there and you said please give us examples right. of you know barriers because we don't you know we don't know unless you yeah. tell us if we're not so have people been doing that like have businesses yeah. been coming to you and and saying fix this like is that yeah. does that happen oh wait we we call it the SWAT team that, that goes in there and looks for regulations but no one knows their business better than the, the people that are in those industries be it the automotive pharmaceutical uh, uh, high tech and and I always say regulations, when you cut regulations, are even better than a tax cut, but we, we're doing both. We're cutting regulations uh, to a tune of uh, over $400 million uh, that we're putting back into to companies. And, and we're just going to continue uh, running the province like a, like a business. And that will give an opportunity to reinvest that, that money into areas that, that matter to people. And again, that's healthcare, education, the economy. So one of the things um, that's awesome to hear, by the way. You know what the, my magical word is, and you said Let's it just it. a little while ago, is people want certainty. Businesses yes. want certainty. They want to make sure there's a plan there that they can invest. And not certainty just for a year, certainty for the next 10 years. And we have a great plan uh, moving forward. That's really, really good yeah. to hear. And you're right. That is a that is a music to ears of business, certainty and regulatory reduction, all that. Okay. So, so I, I was asking you, like, how you hear about the 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 problems people have and, and it reminds me um, when you were here last February last NGA when we hosted you um, people in Ontario know this but in DC you shocked people because you literally gave out your phone number and that was a way and just for people who don't know this that was a way that people actually got in touch with you you responded and then um, somebody was telling me like that it got abused and so okay. you know somebody yeah. like decides that they're gonna have an activism campaign yeah. or whatever it is so way. so you can't do that anymore which is too bad so how it's do you a it's a shame yeah. so how do you um, how do you get out of the bubble like how do you how do you because that had to be a way to keep it real. If you could get a text, I'm sure your staff loved it. Yeah. Like, 
you know, so every, the boss every, got another text. But how do you do it now? Like, how do you keep well, it real? Pe people know if they call my office and uh, they're in need of help, we'll, we'll make sure I return their call or get back to them. But I'll tell you a quick little story. Uh, right around Christmas, driving down the street, and I told my uh, detail, um, security, and I said, pull over. And there's a big Walmart there, and he says, you aren't going into Walmart at, at Christmas. I said, oh, yeah, I am. He says, I'll go buy you whatever you need. <laughs> I said, I'm not going in there to buy something. I'm going in there to talk to the people. And I made it about 10 feet through the door, and people were coming up and, and sharing ideas. And, and the number one comment is just keep going. Uh, when, when you had a, uh, a kind of a more of a left-wing regime 15 years before us that, that uh, we inherited the largest sub-sovereign debt in the world of $346 billion, uh, we're paying right now a million and a half dollars an hour. $36 million a day and $13 billion a year in servicing the debt that they racked up uh, the, the government before us. You know, I always say uh, socialism doesn't work. Uh, raising taxes does not work. Uh, show me anywhere in the world that it works. It, it doesn't. Lowering taxes with people and with businesses, that's how we thrive in uh, our province and, and right across the United States. Could you do me a favor and talk to Bernie Sanders about whether or not socialism <laughs> works? Um, That's actually scary. Yeah. Are you, I mean, yes. how, much, yes. how, how much attention, I mean, I know Canadians in general, you know, uh, tune in, but, but how much are, uh, are you watching what's unfolding here? Uh, and how much, you know, how important is it or how unimportant is it, do you think? Well, I, I love listening to the president on the State of the Union address uh, the other night. And um, as I was saying earlier, uh, I don't think people realize how many Canadians are engaged. Uh, there's an old saying in, in Canada, when, when the U.S. sneezes, Canada catches a cold. That's how intertwined we are uh, as, as two countries. But uh, I, was, uh, I was disappointed uh, when I saw uh, Nancy Pelosi get up there and, and start tearing the speech up. That's uncalled for. I think it's, uh, it's a shame. Uh, it's a real, really, it was real, kind of a made-for-TV moment, though. Yeah. Like you didn't but, think? Uh, I thought it was sort of shrewd. It, well, I don't know. No, just, you didn't like uh, it. I, I didn't like it. Okay. You know, put that aside and, and and move forward. I've never seen that in any State of the Union speech ever. Uh, but uh, you know, let's move forward. Let's see, see what happens in in the election. But uh, right now, uh, again, the economy is booming here. It's booming in Ontario. And uh, we hope uh, the election is going to turn out the right way, okay. literally the right way. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, um, we only have a couple minutes left, um, so I'll say another old saying, and then you, and then you can say whatever you want, obviously. Um, but there's another old saying about Canada and the United States, and, and so w when we think about the USMCA, the new North American agreement, yeah. um, we think about not just Canada and the United States, as important as we are, but we also think about Mexico, yes. an incredibly important uh, economic powerhouse in its own right. right, and now we're doing more together, which is really good. But uh, you know that old elephant and the mouse, you know, the US and Canada uh, are, are, are an elephant and mouse in bed together. You know what the Mexicans say to that? Uh, the Mexicans say, yeah, well, at least you're on top. <laughs> so I don't even know how to comment on that one. <laughs> so so oh, in, the, in, the, um, in the remaining minutes that we have, I know you've got an incredibly busy schedule, and I'm really grateful for you joining us here oh, thank you. Um, and, and joining us in, for, the, for the live stream audience. Um, what should I have asked you that I didn't ask you, or what would you like to... Uh, talk to us about, I know Ontario is open for business uh, and we're a business council, so we love that, but, yeah. but what else, what else uh, should we talk about in our last couple minutes? Well, I'd, I'd love to invite everyone up to uh, Toronto. We're, we're hosting the governors on an investment uh, trade tour and we're, we're looking forward to all businesses and governors to come up on April 21st to the 23rd. We're going to treat you like royalty when you come up and, and we just uh, look forward to continuing on a rewarding business relationship relationship and uh, again uh, two closest allies in the entire world uh, building things together and that's what I look forward to uh, continuing on with a incredible relationship and again I want to thank our American friends uh, for being uh, great allies but uh, also the the business that they've brought to Ontario well I 
Thank you very much for that, and 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 we wish you every success. We um, we work with whatever political leaders the voters um, give us. Um, some political leaders are easier to work with than others, and um, some are more interested in business than others. Um, and but but we work with everybody. But I have to tell you, the message of uh, certainty and regulation and um, open for business is is something that really resonates in a non-political way with the business sector. And just to prove that. Ian Todd is doing his job. Yeah. You mentioned um, th that you're hosting governors in Toronto, April 21 to 23, and you mentioned it to me back in our office. And on our whiteboard here at U Group, right. I have my whole <laughs> year planned out, That's and right. right there it was already written. So uh, I just want you to know that your team down here uh, is 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 awesome, and they've already um, they've already gotten it on our whiteboard. So, well, Scotty, thank you very much, and God bless America, and God bless Canada, two great countries. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.